top five most topsy-turvy things about the 2023 season. Inspired by number five, Sean Lewis's status as a head coach candidate, which is number five, and this guy, first four weeks of the season, he's going to be somewhere else coaching, and like he's shown this prolific offense. And then you guys were talking about I was trying to get uh, Duarte on the air, uh, but there are like now he's been demoted, and this is how they've responded to the the losing streak and all that. It's very strange. I think he'll be a head coach. I think he'll be a very um, exciting one when he is. But man, this was. This was a bit of a weird turn today because when I watch that, I'm not thinking the play calling's bad. I'm thinking the offensive line is criminally bad. And that's not necessarily on Sean Lewis, who just got there. Is this Dion deflecting a little bit? I think, it, I mean, sometimes I think it's you try to do whatever you can to spark something. I feel like if this was somebody not named Dion, that's not where our brains would immediately go. But I do feel like in this case, that's what everybody wants it to be because it's a negative light on Dion, right? Yeah, I, I think there's definitely people rooting for it to be be that um, because mm -hmm. they're they're rooting for failure or maybe they just were, were put off by all of the coverage early on or whatever and like, oh, see, he is he is ma ma can make mistakes or whatever. But, yeah, it's just bizarre, right? Like, I, I mean, their offense has been, um, you know, very uh, – I was just talking earlier, we were talking about the lowest rushing totals in the country, and they're like – nearly at the very bottom, like the very bottom of, of all of college football. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Shador can only do so much. And when you're not even blocking for him, like, I mean, what can you do offensively? Yeah. So something needed to change, like down this stretch run. If they want to try to make a bowl game, like they needed to do something to shake things up. I don't know if this was the move that needed to be made. I don't know enough about what goes on inside those walls. Um, but I know that's certainly the reaction of most people is this is deflection uh, from, you know, other issues or – or whatnot. So yeah, I mean, we'll see clearly when they're going to play these next four games. I didn't bring it up. The, the apps. I lo I like what Dion's done, and I hope he has success. But in his post game following UCLA, he continued to talk about needing to protect Shadur, and he talked about some coaches needing to get players to step up and play better. Yeah, and I'm not talking about you necessarily, but yeah. there are people that are absolutely rooting oh, for him to it. fail, and so yeah. they look at this and they're not going to sit there and think of like, oh, well, was this the smart move? Was this the right move? Uh, they're going to go, he's losing it. He's blaming Sean Lewis. And now he's, yeah. you know, and so that's, you know, and I know we don't want to get in the, the mud of Twitter and all that, but there, so it's hard to tell what's what really. And so that's why we need to see kind of what Dion says about this and then how they play, especially in the immediate aftermath. And and that will be telling as well. I, I want to like. say this. I love Dion's post games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're interesting. They're interesting. I love them. I, I, the only thing that Dion has said in the whole build up to the season and throughout was early on. When he was in the spring, he was talking about the roster. And somebody asked him, like, you know, how do you set expectations? And he was very down, and he said, y'all don't know who we have coming. And I was like, yeah, we kind of do. Kind of do. Well, yeah. kind of do. Like, you know, it's it's um, it's one of those. Travis Hunter. Yeah. Shadur like Sanders. Like, yeah, so you have Travis and Shadur and Shiloh. Like, we yeah. know those guys are good. Like, we kind of know that. But some of the other ones that you're getting – um, yes, they're better than the players that Colorado had the year before, but they weren't like it wasn't like he went to Georgia's roster and was like, here you go. You know. Right. And um, as we always say about the portal, there's a reason a lot of guys like Keon Coleman's an exception, but there's a reason why a lot of guys are in the portal, right? You know, and so everybody that you got in the portal didn't necessarily mean that they were gonna be hits right away. But yeah, I mean it's an interesting situation. Is he scapegoating Lewis or, or whatever? I don't know. I think most of all, they're looking for a spark and just trying to figure out some way to try and close the season strong. But, you know, I feel for Sean Lewis in that, you know, he did leave a head coaching job to go take this job, and he's yeah. not necessarily the, the guy who's really at fault for this, but he'll take, you know, some blame for it. Um, but he's going to be fine. Like, he's not going to be out of a job yeah. for very long. So I don't feel too bad about it because somebody will be quick to pick him up. Yep. Number four, the Big 12's power players. A month ago, the Texas Oklahoma game was this is going to be the first of two times they meet. Yeah. <laughs> and because everybody else was kind of, you know, mm. treading water at best. And then all of a sudden, in the immediate aftermath of that game, everybody else is like, yeah, what? What do we miss? Oh, crap. We're in this thing. Let's go. And so now we're at this, this weekend of, of really big clashes, which I think a month ago, nobody thought was going to be this good. You know, and so now here we are at the beginning of November, and the Big 12 is as up for grabs as it's been in every other season, and Oklahoma and Texas is chokehold on the league this year, which everybody thought, especially going into the, the, the Red River game, 
Well, that's not the well, case. Okay, let's also, and I know everyone's going to disagree. Well, not everyone. Oklahoma and Texas were both pretty good. We did not know quite enough about OU, and they had a huge win against Texas. But we always seem to do this. Now, that doesn't mean they won't play, and they might. But there's always two or three, a couple of teams at least, that come out of the middle of the pack and find a way to be very much involved that you didn't expect in the Big 12 race. Every year it seems like that's happened. Yeah, but it's harder to uh, say that two weeks before somebody emerges and just be like, no, just trust me, somebody's going to emerge from the pack. Like you're, cause we, I know what you mean, though. We're talking about what's actually happening. Early on the season, like K-State's losing a game early. Yeah. You know, they're losing to Missouri. And it's like, oh, wait, K-State's not as good as they were supposed to be. Texas Tech's like – are they even going to be bowl eligible after the yeah. first month? And so, like, they're not in the mix. And then Baylor's awful. None of the newcomers look like they're ready. And so you're looking around, you're like, well, who is going to be contending with them? Now, K-State's obviously turned it on, and they've they've been able to get going. But uh, Iowa State's a surprise, like, that they're as good and they're in position. Oklahoma State's a surprise. And so they've all emerged, and that's that's made it. Because early on, though, you're right. I mean, it looked like those two coming out of the gates, Texas beats Alabama, Oklahoma's playing defense. You're like, damn, like, those two look pretty good. But, yeah, I mean, and this tomorrow is likely – with one exception, the best shot for both of them to, to get beat. Uh, Oklahoma's got to play West Virginia next or uh, yeah next week at home though, so maybe West Virginia could give them some problems. But they go to Provo as well. But I mean, what's BYU at that point really? And then they host TCU, and I don't really worry about that one too much. Texas, meanwhile, goes to Fort Worth, which whatever. Um, they go to Iowa State, yeah. so maybe that's another one for them. Then they host Texas Tech, which is whatever. So uh, there is at least one more game in the final three for each of them that could maybe get a little squirrely, but tomorrow is definitely the games that you circle and you go, like, that's the best chance for one or both of them to lose on a Saturday and not to – and certainly one of them losing and not to one another. Number three, Alabama. Like, they're dead. They're alive. They don't look good. They commit a lot of penalties. Ah, they're still in contention for the SEC West title. Yeah. Uh, only one thing's really changed in that they're on the outside of the CFP and looking in as opposed to most... They don't you, control their own destiny. Yeah, they don't control they their really own don't. destiny. Not even if they were to like run the table, it would yeah. still not quite be that, although probably. No, and, and part of that is also that there are, there are really good teams in other leagues that have all looked better than Alabama. So they don't also have that. I don't think this year, if it came down to the eye test of a bunch of one-loss teams, Alabama wouldn't just be the, well, we'll put Alabama in there because we know, because they haven't done that at all. Yeah. They, haven't, they haven't really passed that eye test. It's where if it came down to, say, Ohio State beats Michigan, and you're looking at Michigan's one loss against Alabama's one loss. You're like, well, their eye test is better, so you're going to put Michigan in. You know, so like that would be the thing. And and that's again another wild hypothetical. But you know, we're in we're in a weird year where Alabama. Uh, I'm sure Nick Saban like walks in after these losses and goes, this this crap doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. <laughs> just like I'm glad we're winning. I'm doing all I can here, but uh, it really doesn't make sense. No. Uh, it, I thought that you wonder at the end of the year, could this be his best coaching job? If they were to somehow keep surviving and moving on and finding a way, could this end up being as far as at Alabama, although other than the first couple of years he was there? Yeah, well, I mean, as far as not controlling their own destiny, uh, they're yeah, they're going to have to root for some losses because the way it stands right now, Ohio State or Michigan is getting in above them. Mm -hmm. And this is like, you know, not one of them falling to somebody else before them, which is, is unlikely. But, um, you know, looking at it, okay, Ohio State or Michigan, both are above them. So one of those is going to grab a spot. Georgia, I mean, unless Bama beats Georgia on this run, and then that's how yeah. you would p potentially do it. But Florida State, they got to hope Florida State loses to somebody. They got to hope Washington loses to somebody. They got to hope Oregon loses again. You know, they got to hope Texas loses to get out of the way. So, yeah, they, they got to hope for a lot of losses by other teams. And it's all, it's, it's doable, but. You're running out of time, and you've got to win all your games as well. So tomorrow's enough of a test, much less than you know the rest of it, and then probably playing Georgia in the title game if you get there. So yeah, yeah. What if Washington's loss is a close one to Oregon in the Pac-12 title game? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know that doesn't help them at all. So I mean, to your point though, they've they've made it more interesting than it looked like it was going to be at the beginning of the year, and I would trade their bad years for <laughs> for a yeah. lot of other teams, no. you know, good years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely. Number two, Lincoln Riley. Uh, you know, kicking young beat reporters out of the, you know, you know, banning them for a, a couple weeks because they they did some things that not letting players talk after a loss, um, seemingly 
like telling people like, oh, the NFL has got a much better schedule, which would make everybody at USC who just hired you two years ago go, uh, yeah, so, yeah. you know, all that. Uh, he always felt to me when he was in Oklahoma, like he's a pretty steady guy. And then the last couple of years, it's been pretty topsy-turvy with him. And with that team, uh, which, you know, can score 50 points if they, you know, when they need to, but uh, really, it would be nice for USC fans if they didn't always need to score fifty to win. Yeah, and that's a that's going to be the case this weekend too. Um, that's going to be a, a shootout. There's no doubt about that with them in Washington. Uh, so yeah, you're right. That's the way a lot of Oklahoma fans felt. Was can we just play some defense, like just a, even a little bit of defense? And like offense is great, but if you just played a little bit of defense, you 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 barely you know lose any games and and he barely lost any games there as is but you know when they ran into big time teams in the playoff and whatnot it was pretty clear what the weaknesses were and, and how one-dimensional that they could be but it's been a weird year who knows where his mind's really at just had the the sickness or what was it pneumonia that he had or whatever yeah. uh, a week or so ago it's just been strange um the loyalty he to alex kicked Drench, in a lot faster than i did or yeah no did. kidding he did um i you know makes you makes you wonder still just because of his history and you know secret meetings that he's had in the past and whatnot so yeah i don't i don't know where his head's at i know it's been a tough year certainly not where uh, usc thought that they would be in caleb williams you know final run but yeah that that game uh, tomorrow is going to be really uh really interesting from an offensive and defensive standpoint of like who actually gets a stop in that game yep absolutely number one whatever the hell is going on at michigan this is this story was never really straightforward. And then today, the reports, and now admittedly from Michigan, that they're in possession of documents that show that Ohio State uh, is who found out that they were doing this by hiring private investigators with connections to Ryan Day's family. And to which I say, all right, like that's weird that Ohio State wouldn't just go to the Big Ten and say this. And that Tony Petiti certainly needs to deal with that too, but you're still cheating, right? Like you still broke the rules. So there is a lot of deflection. There yeah. is a ton and of deflection. There's a lot of burying heads in it's sand. It's not technically cheating by yeah. the rule books, but it's yeah. like a moral, like, you know, it, from a place that has a holier than thou sometimes reputation well, of how they feel about themselves. Especially since and it's a great university, especially yeah. since most of the coaches they hire are alums because no one else could figure out how to win at Michigan. Right. You have to have been there to understand it. And and then when they hired one, Rich Rodriguez, that wasn't, like, well, within a year, they're like, well, he doesn't understand. Like, he, it's like they still speak the language up there or something. It, it, right. It, it's weird. And then, you know, part of it is like, well, Connor Stallions wasn't at all these games. He just sent other people to do it. You're like, well, you know, Yes, uh, John Gotti didn't murder all the people that he told people to murder, but he still told them to do it. Right, like, exactly. You know, you can't, like, all this deflection. Michigan, I think, needs to get to the point, like, there there could be, and the smartest thing to do for them would be to go to the Big Ten and go, okay, look, you don't want us out of the championship game. We don't want to be out of the championship game. But how do we get this to stop now? I like don't know. There's, in the only, middle. there's only two things that are going to get people to stop, right? Uh, Harbaugh suspended, or they, and they're not going to make them forfeit games. Yeah. It, it, it's not going to happen, but go ahead, Craig. Yeah. Uh, I don't know is not an excuse no. for yeah. the head football coach, no, especially not when the guy that you don't know about is right next to you in a whole lot of videos who's saying something to you or to your assistants who's clearly looking across the field and taking away some things and turning to you or to someone else and saying something in your ear like, yeah, the whole I don't know is um, is not uh, a justifiable answer. And you know what? It wouldn't be even if we didn't see Connor Stallions in all those videos. Yeah. Because isn't that, the, isn't that what the precedent is? Is that if it's your program, you should know everything that's going on? Now, yeah. if it's some dude getting like a – a weed arrest, and these, you know, it's it just doesn't come across your desk somehow or another. It's a minor misdemeanor type of a thing. You should still know about that. Yeah. But you know, maybe just maybe that doesn't quite get all the way to you because of of some reason or another because it's not that big of a deal. But like this, I mean, this has to do with calculated, coordinated, you know, scouting and plane tickets and you know, thousands of dollars at this point, tens of thousands probably spent on tickets, plane yeah. tickets and and things. So. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. Uh, again, there's a lot of layers to to peel back. I do think there are some people that are, 
you know, Michigan fans who are just, well, it didn't technically break any rules. It was like, man, if you really look in the mirror, like, come on, you know what's up. Like, you know, this was, there's some shady stuff going on here. Whether or not you are going to chalk that up to everybody does it or whatever, it's like, no, this is a little bit more complex than it seems like any other systems yeah. out there. So, you know, whether Ohio State turned them in or not, mm. like, wouldn't that be fitting? Wouldn't that be what Ohio State would do if they found Michigan caught up in a huge scandal yeah. Yeah. and vice versa? Not, so, Not to mention that there's all 